Before the 15th century, accusations of witchcraft were rare. Those convicted typically suffered penalties no more harsh than public penances, such as a day in the stocks. It was a period of religious turmoil, and the witch craze that ensued took advantage of the increasing intolerance of the Reformation and Counter-Reformation in Europe, where Protestant and Catholic camps pitted against one another, each zealously strived to maintain what they deemed to be the purity of faith. Witchcraft is a quite a big thing in the early modern world, basically for three reasons. There's an increase in social tension, there's an increase in religious conflict, and there's also an increase in the use of the criminal law. And those three things come together to create witchcraft prosecutions. And that's true across 16th, 17th century Europe, but of course you also find it in Britain as well. The means of witchcraft vary, but to most ordinary people, they essentially mean that somebody in your midst, one of your neighbours, who has actually got it in for you and will use magical power in order to cause harm. Mother Gabley, who was prosecuted for witchcraft in Norfolk in the 1580s, is exactly that sort of a person. We really don't know very much about her, except for this entry in a parish register, which records that she was accused of witchcraft, um, specifically of sinking a ship and causing 13 sailors to drown. Um, by putting some eggs in a pail of water and supposedly boiling them, that's what the record says, but quite exactly what that means, what she did, we don't know, but obviously it was some kind of magical spell which people around thought that she'd used in order to cause harm. In 1583, Mother Gabby was found guilty of the act of witchcraft and executed by public hanging. She was believed to have caused the deaths of Robert Archer, Oliver Cobb, William Barrett, and Richard Dye, all of whom were sailors that perished in a ship returning from Spain. Deaths were brought to pass by the detestable workings of an acerable witch of King's Lynn, whose name was Mother Gabley, by the boiling or rather labouring of certain eggs in a pail full of cold water. Most European legal uh, law codes and tribunals prescribe death for convicted witches. Um, the Bible says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. That's where it is in black and white. And so that uh, European law codes build upon that biblical injunction. So that witches are, when they are found guilty, are executed in many different ways. They are, across most of continental Europe, they are burned at the stake. Sometimes they are garroted first, sometimes they're not. Uh, in England, they are typically, they are hanged because witchcraft is a felony, although a woman might be burnt if she was convicted of murdering a husband of witchcraft, which was the crime of petty treason. Um, in some German states, witches were drowned, they were even buried alive, and that typically in inquisitorial tribunals they had also been tortured often in the most ghastly uh, ways imaginable. In 1646 the civic authorities of King's Lynn expressed their fears of witches once more and called for the witch finder general Matthew Hopkins. Believed to have been responsible for the killing of around 300 women between the years 1644 and 1646 Hopkins used the turmoil of the English Civil War to his advantage. Local magistrates would pay him up to 20 shillings for each witch he uncovered. During the 14th century, the diverse trading of Norfolk's Kingsland Seaport ranks it as one of England's strongest garrisons in the Eastern Association. For any thriving community, eradicating sin and punishing crime was a constant preoccupation, and Lynn was no exception. At Perfleet Quay, a ducking stool, a scold, and a gibbet for exhibiting the corpses of wicked wrongdoers could be found. Pillories and whipping posts stood in both marketplaces, the Tuesday market being the principal site of execution. Whilst witches were believed to fornicate with the devil, kill babies, drink blood, desecrate the cross, and conjure demons, the truth is that many people simply wanted someone to blame for their misfortune. It is rare for us to see the social impact of such persecutions as that of Mother Gabby, though the effects would be devastating for a family to lose a mother, or a wife, 
or even a father or husband and would have repercussions down through the generations.